We're continuing our studies in Chapter 7 on enzyme kinetics and inhibition, and in this lesson we'll be looking at irreversible enzyme inhibition. We find that there are sub-substances that can inhibit enzyme catalysis and that they act irreversibly, that is to say they permanently inactivate the enzyme. In one such example, a group might be attached covalently to the enzyme and it might be to an active site residue that's key in catalysis. Here's the example of chymotrypsin that can be permanently inactivated by transferring a group from disopropyl phosphofluoridate to the active site serine residue. So we've transferred the DIP group and as you can see now the oxygen on the serine can no longer act as a nucleophile. So as long as that group is attached this enzyme is permanently inactivated. Note that since we formed a covalent bond the only way to reactivate the enzyme is to remove the group and this would probably have to be done enzymatically. Another example of an irreversible enzyme inhibition would be substances that act as suicide substrates. They bind like the normal substrate and the reaction begins but because of the chemical nature of the substrate you the enzyme can't complete the reaction and so it gets stuck in the active site. Here's the example of thymidylate synthase. It catalyzes the methylation of deoxyUMP to form deoxyTMP. So what's key is we need that hydrogen atom at the number 5 position so that we can replace it with the methyl group. If instead of the substrate DUMP we feed this enzyme a fluoridated DUMP, it cannot carry out the reaction. Here's the structure of 5 fluorouracil at the top here, and so here you see there's a fluorine atom at the number 5 position. If this gets converted to a nucleotide, so we have fluoridated DUMP, now we have a fluorine group at that number 5 position, and the enzyme will start the reaction, but it can't carry it out. It can't replace the fluorine with that methyl group. And so this is an example of a suicide substrate. The important thing to recognize here is that the reaction begins, but it cannot complete. And so the substrate is stuck in the active site. It's as if we swallowed some food and it got stuck halfway down. It can't go up, it can't go down, it's stuck. And this again is irreversible unless some enzyme or substance reverses what began partially. In our next lesson we're going to see more prominently examples of inhibitors that bind reversibly. What we want to see is how do they work. We'll look at the simplest mechanism for this type of inhibition in the next lesson.